energy resource. Energy has played and will continue to play important role in economic development of entire world. Future development crucially depends on long-term availability of dependable, safe and environmentally sound energy sources. In this video, we will try to analyze different energy options available in the world today and how safe these options are from environment perspective. So energy resources are used to generate electricity and other form of power which are crucial for human use. Broadly energy resources are of two types. First, non-renewable energy resources which are limited in amount and may get exhausted in future. For example, coal, petroleum, natural gas. On the other hand, renewable resources are those which are present in unlimited amount and can be replenished again and again. For example, solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, geothermal, ocean thermal, biomass, biogas energy and hydropower. Now before we begin with the discussion on all these energy sources, please pause this video right here and type in comment box the name of energy resource which you believe is best for the environment. Non-renewable energy resources. Non-renewable -renew energy resources typically include coal, oil and natural gas. These are the resources which are available in limited amount in the environment and cannot be replenished again. So therefore there is always a possibility of exhaustion if these resources are overused. First, coal. So coal is the main non-renewable energy resources which is widely used in thermal power plant to generate electricity. So coal is a non-renewable energy resource and is formed when plant and animal remains get buried inside earth and are subjected to high pressure and temperature conditions. So it takes millions of years for the formation of coal inside earth. So coal is a non-renewable energy resource formed when plant or animal remains are subjected to high pressure conditions inside earth. There are different types of coals depending on percentage of carbon. So anthracite has maximum carbon content that is around 90%. Bituminous contain 80% of carbon. Lignite is another type of coal which contains 70% carbon and peat include 60% carbon. So depending on percentage of carbon, coal can be divided into following type anthracite, bituminous, lignite and peat. So in India, coal mines are located in Jharia, Bokaro, Singroli, Kurba and other places like Raniganj. Coal is definitely an important energy resource. It has numerous advantages. For example, number one, it can be used to meet growing energy demand. So by using coal as a fuel in thermal power plant, we are able to meet the demand of energy of entire world. Thermal power plant are the industries which are based on coal and the, the coal is used as a fuel to boil water. Boil water generate steam which can be used to run turbine and this is how energy is generated in thermal power plant. In fact, because of thermal power plant and coal, we are able to meet energy requirement of entire world and thereby world is able to develop and progress. Not only this, coal is also important because it is easily transported from one place to another. Coal is solid substance and we know that solid substance can easily be transported and that is another advantage of using coal. Not only this, coal also has very high calorific value. That means burning coal generates huge amount of energy. In fact, the energy content of bituminous anthracite is around 29 to 33 kilojoule per gram. And for low grade coal like lignite, energy content is 17 to 21 kilojoule per gram. On one hand, coal has many advantage, but at the same time, there are many disadvantages of coal. First, coal is a non-renewable resources and we know that non-renewable resources are limited. There are chances that these resources may get exhausted if they are overused. Not only this, coal also results in the problem of global warming. So coal is carbon and burning of coal or carbon release carbon dioxide in the atmosphere Carbon dioxide is the greenhouse gas which create problem like global warming and climate change. So the temperature of entire earth is increasing day by day because of high coal consumption across the world. Next point is that coal also has one more disadvantage that when coal uh, is being used then we are dependent on mining activity. The reason is that coal is present in sub layers of earth and to extract coal we require mines, heavy machines etc and that create lot of negative problems in the environment. For example, 
uh, for establishing mines we have to clear the area for uh, from forest cover that leads to deforestation of the area and lastly uh, the place become devegetated it become barren and is totally unproductive without any forest cover moreover workers which are working in coal mines do get affected with health problem because huge amount of toxic substance are released in the coal mine areas and when these toxic fumes and gases are inhaled by the worker they get affected with health problems next non renewable energy resources petroleum so petroleum is also known as crude oil or simply oil it is naturally occurring yellowish black liquid mixture of many hydrocarbons especially alkane hydrocarbons petroleum is an important compound so crude oil or petroleum can be subdivided into different components like butane petrol kerosene diesel fuel oil lubricating oil based on their boiling point this method by which crude oil is divided into sub components based on the boiling point is known as fractional distillation and all these newly formed compounds like butane petrol kerosene etc have high uh, importance in industrial application petroleum has numerous advantages and disadvantage so the advantage of petroleum is that it is used to meet growing energy demand in fact all across the world petroleum is used as a major fuel in vehicles secondly petroleum is easy to be transported from one place to another with the help of pipeline system third petroleum has high calorific value that means burning of petroleum can lead to huge amount of energy there are numerous disadvantages associated with petroleum for example it is a non renewable resource and may get exhausted in future not only this petroleum is extracted by the process of oil drill oil drill can result in oil spill and it can lead to adverse impact on marine ecosystem we have already observed impact of major oil spills in america like exxon valdez oil spill incident and the great deep water horizon oil spill which created huge devastation in aquatic ecosystem of american territory petroleum is a fossil fuel burning of petroleum result in greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and this greenhouse gas contribute to the problem of global warming not only this petroleum is highly costly resource and it is not uh, evenly present across the world so few nations dominate this crucial petroleum energy resource natural gas is one of the important non renewable energy resource which is formed after decomposition of plant and animal remain in deep layers of rock so chemically natural gas contain gaseous hydrocarbon primarily methane but it include also smaller amount of other higher alkane so natural gas include methane in majority along with other alkanes like ethane propane butane etc natural gas is extracted from india in different places like gujarat mumbai high assam godavari and krishna river basin natural gas has many advantages for example it can be used to meet growing energy demand Second natural gas is easy to be transported from one place to another natural gas has high calorific value of around 43.6 kJ per gram however there are many disadvantage so the first disadvantage of natural gas is that it is non renewable energy resource and may get exhausted in future not only this uh, usage of natural gas contribute to greenhouse gas emission like methane is released out from natural gas and methane is greenhouse gas and contribute to global warming and climate change lastly natural gas is highly combustible and therefore it can lead to explosion or accidents moreover this resource is costly and again natural gas is dominated by few nations only non renewable energy resources like petrol oil or coal have huge negative implications on environment in this regard we are going to discuss two case studies related to oil spill case study number 1 is exxon valdez oil spill incident of 1989 and case study number 2 is deep water horizon oil spill of 2010 in america so oil is a non renewable energy resource which play very important role in economy of the country for long time usa was importing its oil from opec nations opec stands for organization of petroleum exporting countries which include saudi arabia iran libya and other nations 
so many shipping companies were involved in transportation of oil from all these opec countries to american territory but in 1973 america was in favor of israel during arab israel war and therefore arab countries which are major stakeholders in opec or nations they had imposed an oil embargo on usa so in 1973 america faced implication of arab israel war in the form of oil crisis and this was the point when america was left with no power no gas at all so country was facing a major oil crisis and therefore us president richard nixon started exploring alternate energy option within the areas of america this was also an important step to make country self sufficient in oil supply so that it no longer be dependent on opec world so one such location with huge oil deposit was found in northern area of alaska now this northern part of alaska is slightly far away from other states so there was a requirement to interconnect northern part of alaska with southern port of alaska so that shipping companies could transport oil further to other states of america in this direction trans alaska pipeline system was developed to interconnect prudhoe bay with rich oil reserve in northern alaska with valdez port in southern alaskan region so this is known as trans alaska pipeline system later oil collected at valdez port was further shipped to other states of america many shipping companies were involved in transportation of oil from valdez port of southern alaska to other states of america for example companies like exxon mobil company bp oil etc were involved in this business on one day that means on the date of march 24 1989 one of the super tanker of exxon mobil company was carrying huge amount of oil in gulf of alaska and accidentally this uh, ship spilled huge amount of oil in the areas of gulf of alaska it was the time period when this ship had just left valdez port later two reasons were found to be associated with exxon valdez oil spill first reason exxon mobil company failed to install latest technology to trace iceberg in its way and thereby since it has not installed iceberg monitoring system therefore the ship of the company collided with an iceberg second reason associated with this incident is that the captain of the ship joseph hazelwood was drunk at the time when super tanker left valdez port this incident had created huge negative impact on marine life so aquatic life was affected in fact 300 seals 250000 seabirds 250 eagles 22 whales were found to be dead immediately after this incident alaskan coastline was badly contaminated and the local people of the place lost their livelihood because of extreme contaminants in water body even before the case was filed against the company exxon mobil on its own paid dollar 1 billion immediately for clean up of contaminated site In fact clean up was completed within 3 years that means from 1989 till 1992 in 1992 case was filed against exxon mobil company and the district court declared that exxon mobil company had violated clean water act and therefore dollar 2.2 billion was imposed on exxon mobil company as a fine and it was decided that this dollar 2.2 billion would be used for conservation programs of aquatic species local people were well compensated by the company later on and lastly exxon company was imposed with dollar 507.5 million as a punitive damage so that company does not repeat this mistake again in future since captain joseph hazelwood was found drunk at the time when exxon ship left valdez port therefore he was imposed with fine of dollar 5000 US Congress passed Oil Pollution Act 1990 to prevent any further catastrophic oil spill incident in future. This law framed strategies for prevention, liability and compensation in relation to oil pollution. So non-renewable resources like oil do create negative impact on environment especially in the cases of oil spill. Though America had learned strong lessons after Exxon Valdez oil spill incident of 1989. but in order to prosper economically america's dependency on oil as resource continued even after this incident recently in 2010 america faced a major environmental disaster again this time it was deep water horizon oil spill it is considered as worst marine oil spill incident of all the time 
This incident is also known as Gulf of Mexico oil spill. Deepwater Horizon oil spill took place on April 20, 2010 in Gulf of Mexico region 41 miles away from American coastline. It was triggered by a massive explosion on Deepwater Horizon oil rig. Now you may wonder what are these oil rig? So oil rig or oil platform are basically the structure with facilities to extract and process petroleum and natural gas that lie in rock beneath seabed. So oil rig also contain lot of facility for oil extraction as well as it has facility to accommodate workforce. In this case Deepwater Horizon oil rig was constructed by Hyundai Heavy Industry during 1998 till 2001. In 2001 Transocean one of the Swiss firm became owner of this oil rig Transocean provided this Deepwater Horizon oil rig to another London based company that is BP Oil for oil drilling process and extraction on lease On April 20 2010 this Deepwater Horizon oil rig was involved in oil extraction from around 13000 feet deep in seabed It is believed that due to failure of a device which is known as blowout preventer huge amount of methane gas at very high temperature and pressure came out with high force resulting in a massive explosion entire oil rig was engulfed in flame spill was an eye opener to highlight risk of drilling oil in ecologically most sensitive part of the world Immediately after this incident 11 workers were found to be dead and 17 workers were badly injured. 2 days later that means on April 22 2010 deep water oil rig sank in water. With sinking of this oil rig stored oil present on the rig started leaking out. It is believed that 6000 barrel of oil leaked in ocean water every day for next continuous 3 months. This resulted in oil slick in water of gulf of mexico incident had severe impact on aquatic life 6104 birds 609 sea turtle 100 dolphin and many mammals were found to be dead water of gulf of mexico was found to contain very high amount of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon this chemical is considered to be carcinogenic and can interfere with biological process This chemical was found to cause negative impact on fish. In this case court held BP oil responsible for gross negligence. No safety measure and no proper training was given to the staff to deal with such incident and therefore dollar 80 billion was imposed as a fine on BP oil. Transocean a Swiss firm and owner of Deepwater Horizon oil rig was imposed with fine of dollar 1.4 billion. Helly Burton which was an American MNC was also found responsible for providing faulty cement due to this the well was not sealed properly and gas leaked out resulting in massive explosion so a fine of dollar 1.1 billion was imposed on heli burton so offshore drilling present environmental challenges both from produced hydrocarbons and material used during drilling operations Oil industry is continuously making a positive impact ensuring events like oil spill never happen again. Although some would question if extracting fossil fuel from earth would ever be risk free. Comprehensively there is still a long way to go but development however small is still in progress. Renewable energy resources Now that we know environmental impact of coal oil and natural gas it is important to analyze renewable energy resources renewable energy resources are unlimited and can be reused again and again main types of renewable energy resources are solar energy wind energy tidal geothermal ocean thermal biomass biogas and hydropower energy solar energy solar energy is a type of renewable energy resource which is freely harnessed because it is available in plenty so the sunlight directly obtained can be used for various purpose and that contributes to solar energy in simple term we can define solar energy as the radiant energy and heat from sun that is harnessed using a range of technologies such as solar power to generate electricity solar energy can be derived by using various equipments like solar cell 
Solar cell is commonly used in calculators and watches. It contains high amount of silica and gallium which traps solar energy. Second device which is often used to trap solar energy is solar panel. Solar panels are usually installed on the rooftop of buildings or houses and sunlight falls on these solar panels and is absorbed which can be further used to heat water or for any other purpose. In solar panel, multiple solar cells are placed next to each other which makes harnessing of sunlight much more in comparison to single solar cell. Third device which is often used is solar water heater. So the panel which is installed in the rooftop can absorb large amount of heat. This heat or sunlight can be used to warm the water. So this is a mechanism under solar water heater. Solar energy is so important that countries like India have, have initiated missions like National Solar Mission. So National Solar Mission is one of the initiative that is part of National Action Plan on Climate Change in India. So in India, constantly country is planning to reduce carbon impact and to minimize its footprint of carbon, India has launched National Action Plan on Climate Change. This action plan include many strategies to combat climate change and one of the strategy is to promote solar energy. So National Solar Mission is all about promoting solar energy in India. Solar Mission was launched in 2010 by Government of India to promote solar power in the country. Initially main objective of this mission was to increase solar power with a target of 20 gigawatt by 2022. However, the target has later been increased to 100 gigawatt by the end of 2015. As a result of national solar vision, India has continuously increased solar power generation capacity by nearly five times. Another initiative in the field of solar energy is International Solar Alliance. International Solar Alliance was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2015. In 2016, Framework Agreement of International Solar Alliance was signed by more than 100 countries in Morocco. So the main idea behind National Solar Alliance is to create an alliance of countries which fall on tropical region. Since tropical region receive maximum sunlight, so all the countries present between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn will collaborate with each other to harness solar energy. Such countries which are on tropical region receive direct sunlight and therefore they have potential to develop solar energy. So this alliance is a treaty based intergovernmental organization which can, which can be considered as largest grouping state after United Nations. Solar energy has considerable advantages. For example, it creates no pollution at all. It is affordable in long term. It is a renewable energy resource and thereby it can be reused again. It will never be exhausted. Also nutrients are retained in food cooked in solar cooker. However, there are few disadvantages like initial cost of installation of solar plants are very high. Solar energy cannot be harnessed during rainy season or during winter when enough sunlight is not available. Process of harnessing solar energy is time consuming and very slow process. Solar panel require large space. Next energy resource is wind energy. Wind energy is the energy which is derived from wind. So wind energy utilizes wind for generation of electricity. High spin wind have lot of kinetic energy. So wind turbine convert kinetic energy of wind into mechanical power and a generator is placed next to the turbine which convert mechanical power into electricity. There are considerable advantages of wind energy. For example, again, it does not create any pollution. It is affordable in long term. It is a renewable energy resource which can be reused again and again and will never be exhausted. However, there are considerable disadvantage of wind energy. First, initial cost of installation of wind energy power plant is very high. Second, wind energy can only be harnessed in a specific area with high wind speed like coastal area. So this energy resource is basically site specific. Wind turbines at times are responsible for death of many birds. Windmills require large area. Tidal energy. Tidal energy is the amount of energy generated from the differences of high tide and low tide. So tidal power is another form of renewable energy resources but here we are using tides for generating electricity. 
Tides are formed in ocean water due to gravitational pull of sun or moon. At times, water of ocean moves upwards, which is known as high tide. And when water level falls down, then it is known as low tide situation. Both high tide and low tide can be used for generating electricity. But there is one condition. And the condition is that difference between high tide and low tide should be more than 20 meters. So in coastal areas where high tide, low tide difference is sufficient, in such places, we can develop tidal energy power projects. So let's say this is C. And here next to the sea reservoir is developed. Tidal barrage is placed in between sea and reservoir followed by a turbine in between. So when water level is high due to high tide situation then water moves from sea to reservoir. And in that process turbine placed in the center gets rotated and thereby electricity is generated. In low tide situation in sea opposite Phenomena is observed. That means level of water is more in reservoir as compared to the sea. And therefore water moves from reservoir into sea. As a result of this, the turbine gets rotated and thereby electricity is generated. So both high tide and low tide situation play very important role in generating electricity in tidal energy power projects. Tidal energy has number of advantages. For example, it does not create any pollution. It is quite affordable in long term. This energy is renewable energy resource and therefore it will never be exhausted. But tidal energy projects do have few disadvantages like initial cost of installation is quite high. Tidal energy can be harnessed in only those areas where there is sufficient difference between high tide and low tides. Tidal plants also affect aquatic life forms since the turbine is right in the coastal region. Geothermal energy is the energy which is derived from heat of earth. It is another form of renewable energy resource. So let's say this is earth surface. Deep within earth many chemical reactions are observed which generate heat. Now these chemical reactions which are present inside earth are responsible for huge amount of heat. In certain places, we are able to see the heat of earth in the form of hot water spring. That means hot water gushes out in certain locations. And if we are able to trap that hot water, we can actually use it for generating electricity in the form of geothermal energy. So to do this, pipes are inserted inside earth in order to extract hot water. This boiling hot water is then extracted upwards on earth's surface and used for making steam. Now the steam of water is then used to run turbine. Later, after generating electricity, cold water is inserted back inside earth. In India, Ladakh is about to get India's first geothermal power plant very soon. Geothermal energy has many advantages. For example, it does not lead to any kind of pollution. Geothermal energy is quite affordable in long term. It is renewable energy resource and therefore it can never be exhausted. However, there are few disadvantages associated with geothermal energy and the disadvantages are following. First, initial cost of installation is quite high. Second, we can harness geothermal energy power project only in certain specific areas where hot water is available. And when we create or insert pipe inside earth, it can lead to geological instability. Moreover, insertion of pipe in earth can result in deforestation. That means we have to clear the vegetation of the place in order to insert the pipe and that can damage local ecology of that place. Ocean thermal energy. Ocean thermal energy is another form of renewable energy which is harnessed using the temperature difference of upper layer of ocean and bottom layers of ocean. Ocean thermal energy is produced by using the temperature difference between deep cold ocean water and warm tropical surface water. In ocean sunlight is more exposed on upper water layers and therefore up on upper layer water is warm while on the other hand bottom layers of ocean are cold. So if the temperature difference between warm water and cold water is more than 20 degrees Celsius then we can harness ocean thermal energy. So to harness ocean thermal energy warm water is utilized to boil liquid like ammonia. Vapors of the liquid are then used to run turbine. Later on these vapors are further condensed and in this process of condensation cold water from bottom layers of ocean is used. After condensing vapor again liquid ammonia is formed. So this is how ocean thermal energy is derived. 
Ocean thermal energy has numerous advantages. Number one, it creates no pollution in the environment. Second, it is quite affordable in long term. Ocean thermal energy is renewable energy resources and therefore it will never be exhausted if even if we continue to use it in future. However, ocean thermal energy do have many disadvantages. Disadvantage number one, initial cost of installation is quite high. Second, this ocean thermal energy can be harnessed only in those places where temperature difference between upper and bottom layer of ocean water is more than 20 degrees Celsius. That means this energy resource is site specific. We cannot develop this energy resource in any place on ocean. Lastly, ocean thermal energy can affect aquatic life forms. Biomass energy. Biomass energy is derived from biomass of plant or dry matter of plant. We all know that plants undergo photosynthesis. In presence of sunlight, plants convert carbon dioxide water into carbohydrate. So, for continuous time period, biomass energy is stored in plants. So, energy stored in plants is known as biomass energy. Biomass contain stored chemical energy from sun. Plants produce biomass through photosynthesis. Biomass can be burned directly for heat or converted into liquid or gaseous fuel through various processes. Burning of fuel wood or agricultural residue is one way to obtain biomass energy. There are other kinds of crops which are known as petro crops like jetrofa. These petro crops are also sources of biomass energy. Plants like jetrofa have substance like petroleum in their body cells. And these substances which are similar to petroleum can be viable option against the use of petroleum in future. We can harness biomass energy also using following ways. First, combustion. So it is the method in which instead of coal or any other fossil fuel, biomass or plant material is used to produce steam that further run turbine. So in combustion in step, instead of coal, we use biomass and with the use of biomass, liquid water is boiled up to generate steam. This steam is further used to run turbine. So when biomass is burnt along with coal, then combustion is known as co-firing. On the other hand, when power is generated only by the use of biomass, then process is known as biomass based combustion. Second method to use biomass energy is through anaerobic digestion. In this method, microorganisms decompose organic matter and finally plant waste or material of plant can be converted into biogas. This method is applicable on bio biomass that is present within our houses like kitchen waste or sewage. So in this process of anaerobic digestion, animal waste or plant waste get converted into biogas which is mixture of many other gases like methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. Third method is pyrolysis. This is an emerging technology to generate biomass based power. In this method, biomass is rapidly heated to 450 to 600 degrees Celsius and that too in absence of air. Ultimately, it results in formation of pyrolysis oil. So in this method, biomass is basically heated up in order to generate bio oil or pyrolysis oil. Biogas energy. So biogas refer to mixture of gases which are produced by anaerobic decomposition of organic matter like agricultural waste, municipal waste, plant residue or food waste. Biogas actually contain mixture of methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and moisture. So biogas is formed when animal or plant waste is subjected to anaerobic decomposition. Anaerobic decomposition is a method in which bacteria decompose organic waste in absence of oxygen. So after anaerobic decomposition, biogas is formed. Biogas is mixture of many gases like methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. However, methane is present in maximum proportion. So biogas can be defined as mixture of methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide formed after anaerobic decomposition of plant or animal waste. To generate biogas energy, we need to maintain anaerobic condition. That means total absence of oxygen is required to decompose plant or animal waste and for this digester tank is placed underground inside earth. This digester tank is the main place in which biogas is formed. Raw material required for generating biogas include animal waste or plant waste which is placed in mixing tank. 
This mixing tank is linked to digester tank with the help of pipes. Digester tank is also connected to outlet tank. Outlet tank is meant to collect residual material. Moreover, digester tank has an opening to collect biogas. So animal waste is transferred into digester tank. So, so biogas is formed in digester tank through decomposition of animal waste. Later, biogas which is formed is collected through an outlet. Whatever residual material is left behind in digester tank is then transferred to outlet tank and is separated out. Biogas energy offers multiple advantages. For example, this is an energy resource which is free of cost. In fact, we are reducing waste as waste material is the main raw material for generating biogas. It is renewable energy resource and waste is used for its generation. Biogas energy involves no input cost as waste is only required as the raw material. Even leftover waste slurry can be used as fertilizer. Biogas is available in plenty and it will never be exhausted. However, disadvantage of biogas are following. Biogas is mixture of methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. So, generating biogas means that there will be release of carbon dioxide, methane gas. Both these gases are greenhouse gases and they trap solar radiations contributing to global warming and climate change issues. Second, biogas also have unpleasant odor due to the release of hydrogen sulfide gas. Third, biogas is not at all suitable in urban areas because in urban areas, raw material that is animal waste is not available in plenty. Lastly, biogas is less efficient energy resource in comparison to the other energy resources. Hydropower energy is another form of renewable energy resource. Hydropower energy is generated by using water. So, in hydropower energy, water is placed at height in dam and then water is made to fall from great height in order to convert potential energy of water into kinetic energy. Turbine is placed at the bottom which gets rotated due to the force of water and that is how electricity is generated. So, hydropower is the energy derived from conversion of potential energy of falling or fast running water into kinetic energy and further conversion of this kinetic energy into electricity with the help of turbine. Hydroelectric power plant consists of a high dam that is built across large river to create a reservoir and a station is placed where process of energy conversion take place. Dam or reservoir are created in order to derive hydropower energy. So the main advantage of hydropower energy is that hydropower energy does not lead to any kind of pollution. Hydropower is also affordable in long term. Hydropower use water. Water is available in plenty and therefore it is renewable energy resource. Hydropower can never be exhausted because we are reusing water again and again in the dam. Hydropower is very crucial in order to meet growing energy demand of entire world. But hydropower has many disadvantages. For example, dam construction is very costly process. Secondly, by creating turbine and generator in water, aquatic life do get affected with this process. Third, hydropower energy projects require large area to build dam and therefore it leads to deforestation. Deforestation further leads to loss of trees and displacement of wild animals. Water flow of rivers also get affected with dam construction. Dam also increase risk of flood. At times when dams are overfilled, then when suddenly the dam gates are opened, that may result in flooding in low-lying areas. Dam lead to displacement of tribal people or villagers in low-lying area. In order to create dam, large areas of uh, forest is acquired and at times tribal people do get displaced in that process. Majority of electricity generated in the world is derived from hydropower, coal-based thermal power and nuclear energy. We have already observed that non-renewable energy sources like coal, petrol and oil create negative impact on environment. But even renewable resources like hydropower can lead to severe implication on environment and society. Let us try to understand impact of hydropower on environment and society with the help of case study. This case study is related to Sardar Sarovar Dam. Narmada River is a shared water resource between Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Gujarat. 
river originate from madhya pradesh flows through maharashtra and gujarat and finally it joins arabian sea sardar sarovar dam is presently located on narmada river in the state of gujarat sardar sarovar dam is most controversial dam of the country to understand the controversy it is important to know few facts first narmada river flows through madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat shared water resources are usually matter of conflict in this case location of dam was matter of conflict between madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat it was known that a state that would be able to construct mega dam on narmada river would eventually prosper therefore madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat wanted dam within their own territory so water is actually a matter of a state list in indian constitution but shared river require consultation of all states before decision making on water allocation takes place in this case madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat were unable to resolve the matter of water allocation of narmada river so in order to resolve this matter all the states had applied for tribunal formation in indian constitution if states are unable to resolve water matter then the states through which river is shared can apply for tribunal formation under interstate water dispute tribunal act 1956 this law allows states to form tribunal or interstate water disputes so tribunal include basically eminent judges of supreme court who then take up the matter and analyze evidences on water issues so narmada water dispute tribunal was formed in 1969 narmada tribunal include eminent judges and finally they studied the data related to water content in madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat after analyzing water quantity and the requirement of water of all the states this tribunal gave its judgment in 1979 so the judgment of tribunal included following points first 30 major dam and multiple minor dams were approved for the construction all along narmada river sardar sarovar dam was the most controversial dam because it was of, because it was of great height this dam that means sardar sarovar dam was proposed to be constructed in the state of gujarat tribunal observed that gujarat is the suitable site for sardar sarovar dam because it is close to rajasthan so by making dam it would be easy to transfer water in drought prone areas of rajasthan moreover all the industrial groups were located in gujarat so transfer of electricity would be more easy if dam was constructed here in gujarat itself so tribunal decided that dam would be constructed in the state of gujarat Finally it was clear that lot of tribal people and local people of the area which are residing on the bank of river narmada would be displaced for this tribunal decided that compensation to the displaced families will be provided on the basis of land acquisition act 1894 after this judgment was out world bank agreed to fund sardar sarovar dam project since world bank is involved in providing loan and finance to the developing world However in 1980s Medha Patkar raised concern about Sardar Sarovar dam Medha Patkar and other environmental activists pointed out that effect of dam on environment was not taken into consideration by Narmada tribunal In fact in this dam that means Sardar Sarovar dam and many other proposed mega dams on Narmada river large hectares of forest would be cleared up and wildlife would get displaced but no compensatory scheme or afforestation scheme has been announced by Narmada tribunal second medha patkar also raised concerns related to compensation so compensation that was decided to be provided to displaced family was below market value as it was based on an outdated law of land acquisition act 1894 so the people who would be getting displaced will not get enough amount of money third medha patkar also highlighted that those who are getting displaced due to construction of dam are actually tribal families tribal families generally have no official record to show that land belongs to them and thereby in this situation tribal families will be completely deprived of even getting slight compensation fourth she also raised concern against world bank medha patkar highlighted that world bank has always been vocal about human rights and environmental concern but in this case world bank is supporting sardar sarovar dam which is clear violation of tribal right as well as environment Medha Patkar environmentalists and local villagers together initiated Narmada Bachao Andolan 
Narmada Bachao Andolan was non-violent environment movement to oppose dam construction on Narmada River in order to save forest space. It was the movement against injustice done to the local tribal group. It was a movement to save river Narmada itself, which was likely to be negatively affected by dam. With the strong opposition of dam by activists, later World Bank constituted an independent Morse committee in 1989 to verify claims made by environmentalists of Narmada Bachao Andolan. Moore's committee highlighted that this mega dam would definitely affect environment and also it was gross violation of tribal rights. Considering the report of Moore's committee, World Bank refused to provide any further financial support to Sardar Sarovar Dam. However, Sardar Sarovar Dam has been constructed by taking funds from the state as well as from industrial group. Now this dam is totally functional in the state of Gujarat. Narmada Bachao Andolan is still regarded as one of the most successful movement of the country because of following reasons. Narmada Bachao Andolan provided voice to tribal people to raise their concern. Second, this movement pressurized World Bank to withdraw funds from dam construction. Environmental concerns associated with mega dam were raised for the first time in this movement. Later, Land Acquisition Resettlement Rehabilitation Act 2013 was introduced in the Parliament of India. According to this law, families which get displaced due to development projects are provided with better compensation and alternate home. So the outdated Land Acquisition 1894 Act was replaced by this new law. So hydropower energy is crucial for economic growth. But at the same time, hydropower can cause loss of forest and wildlife. Moreover, poor and marginal section of society face brunt of hydropower projects. Tribal groups have to sacrifice their homes and livelihood for the sake of development. Do you think tribal people get any benefit of so-called economic growth that we are following today? Do you think economic growth model on GDP is right model of development in which rich are becoming more rich and poor are pushed to poverty? We need to strongly introspect our own energy consumption pattern because remember that our demand for energy is somewhat responsible for environment and tribal injustice. Another energy resource which is widely used across the world is nuclear energy. It is debatable whether nuclear energy is renewable or non-renewable. However, nuclear energy is definitely playing an important role in development of the world. So nuclear energy is energy which is present in nucleus of atom and can be utilized by nuclear fission or nuclear fusion reaction. Nuclear fusion reaction is the reaction in which heavy atom like uranium is bombarded with neutrons so that it splits into small nuclei like barium and krypton. So nuclear fission is the reaction in which nucleus of atom splits and form a smaller nuclei after bombardment with neutron. On the other hand, nuclear fusion reaction is the reaction in which two or more small nucleus fuse together to form large nucleus. For example, hydrogen atom can join together to form helium. In this process, large amount of energy is generated. So nuclear energy process require uranium as the basic raw material. In nuclear energy power plant, uranium rods are placed in between control rods and then the energy which is generated is controlled through turbine. India has many nuclear energy power projects. For example, Narora, Jetapur, Tarapur, Kakrapar, Kundakulam, etc. There are many advantages of nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is considered as renewable source of energy because we actually require very small amount of radioactive substance. This small amount of radioactive substance can provide energy for long time period. That means almost around 15 years. It does not release any kind of greenhouse gas. Therefore, it is safe in terms of climate change or global warming. Nuclear energy is affordable in long run. And it will never be exhausted because we have enough amount of radioactive substance. Lastly, this nuclear energy is required to meet growing energy demand. Disadvantage of nuclear energy include following points. Nuclear energy is sometimes considered as non-renewable source of energy because uranium material is limited in amount and we require mining for extraction of uranium which is again harmful for the environment. Second, nuclear energy always pose risk of radioactive leakage. Harmful rays like alpha, beta, gamma radiations are leaked out from radioactive substance. Alpha radiation can cause a skin problem because it has less penetrative power. Beta and gamma can penetrate much deep in the body and can damage organs. 
Nuclear energy is also associated with proliferation of nuclear weapon. Country which has nuclear energy also has technology to develop nuclear weapon. We have already witnessed the consequences of atom bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki city. So in case nuclear weapon proliferate, there will be risk to the existence of entire life form on earth. Lastly, nuclear power plants often lead to nuclear disaster. This has actually been observed in Chernobyl nuclear disaster 1986 and Fukushima nuclear disaster 2011. Let us try to understand impact of nuclear energy on environment with one case study. Chernobyl nuclear disaster 1986. On April 26, 1986, Chernobyl nuclear power plant witnessed a massive nuclear leak. Radioactive substance leaked out in surrounding causing damage to life and property. Chernobyl nuclear power plant was located in Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic of Soviet Union. Soviet Union was Union of 15 Soviet Socialist Republic which was formed in 1922 and lasted till 1991. Chernobyl disaster was observed in present Ukraine and the former area of Ukraine Soviet Socialist Republic on April 26, 1986. It is believed that Chernobyl nuclear disaster became one of the reason behind dissolution of Soviet Union in 1991. Before formation of Soviet Union, Russia was being ruled by Tsar Nicholas II till 1917. During his rule, residents of Russia were being oppressed. Residents were forcefully made to join army to fight World War I in 1914. There was a point in history of Russia when people were no longer able to tolerate rule of Tsar Nicholas II. Under the leadership of Lenin, Russia witnessed February Revolution and October Revolution in 1917 to overthrow the rule of Tsar Nicholas. Finally, after long struggle, Soviet Union was formed and rule of Tsar Nicholas came to an end. Soviet Union was formed in 1922 and lasted till 1991. It is believed that eighth and last ruler of Soviet Union that is, Mikhail Gorbachev failed to take correct measures after Chernobyl nuclear disaster. And this Chernobyl nuclear disaster became one of the reasons behind dissolution of Soviet Union in 1991. Nuclear energy in Chernobyl plant was being generated by nuclear fission reaction. In nuclear fission, heavy uranium atom is bombarded with neutron to generate barium and krypton. This process can result in enormous amount of energy through chain reaction. So to generate limited amount of energy, uranium rods are inserted in between control rods. But however, on April 26, 1986, these control rods were not inserted properly in nuclear power plant. Thereby, uncontrolled chain reaction generated enormous amount of energy. Temperature of nuclear power plant went up to more than 2000 degrees Celsius, resulting in a major explosion. Nuclear fallout or radioactive material went up in atmosphere following a nuclear blast. These nuclear fallouts not only affected Ukraine but also far off countries like Poland. After this incident, radioactive substances were found to be in very high quantity in the environment. In fact, iodine-131 was extremely high. High iodine-131 released into the environment during Chernobyl nuclear tragedy affected thyroid gland of Ukraine residents. Moreover, strontium-90 was found to be very high. Strontium-90 was similar to calcium and thereby strontium-90 replaced calcium in bones and this resulted in weak bones among the residents of Chernobyl area. Radioactive substance released after Chernobyl tragedy were not just limited to Ukraine but were even detected in far off countries like Poland. Poland government took prompt action and provided iodine pill to the residents. Iodine pill was used to increase iodine content in body so that radioactive iodine 131 in environment does not get absorbed in human body. In this tragedy, evacuation of people was done after two weeks in Ukraine. 30 km area around Ukraine nuclear power plant was declared as Chernobyl exclusion zone. Since area was badly contaminated with radioactive substance, therefore no human is allowed to stay in this region even till today. This tragedy resulted in loss of leaders credibility. Mikhail Gorbachev government failed to provide adequate information about nuclear leak to, to the residents. Moreover, evacuation of people was also carried out much late. 
so people lost faith in the government along with other political reason chernobyl tragedy became one of the reason behind dissolution of soviet union finally we cannot conceive idea of development without energy every energy has environment implications it means that there is no such thing as simple energy choice they are all very complex they all involve trade off however with foresight we need to choose energy resources that offer more development and less environment damage at the same time as a responsible citizen we need to introspect ourselves for our own energy consumption wise use of energy by us can surely be a great step in reducing environment damage so my dear students now that you know that electricity which is available to us is coming at a steep environment cost so type in comment box and tell me what we should do to conserve this precious energy resource